Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. So I've actually just got back from a holiday in the States. I was visiting my family um, out there. We are actually in Kentucky to see my uncle who has a farm there and also to go see the total solar eclipse that went through the US. Um, oh my goodness, uh, on Monday. It feels like it was so long ago, but it was literally only on Monday. But I just got back. I will have a vlog of that trip going up, hopefully this weekend, where you can see the fun stuff. When it's up, I will link it down below in the description, because it will be fun, um, and you can see what we got up to. But I was away, and while I was away, uh, things happened to my plants. They, they did things, and I thought it'd be fun to take you through some of the most exciting, most notable things that have happened while I was away, and just give you general April updates on my plants right now. So that is what is going to happen. Before I do though, I wanna say if you're new here and you don't know me already, hi, my name is Emma and I make houseplanty content all over the internet. So if you want to follow along with my houseplanty journey and maybe learn something along the way, stick around and watch some more of my videos and subscribe to my channel. If you're not new here, thanks for coming back. I really appreciate it. Let us get into this. So I think it makes the most sense to start off with this. <laughs> this is my philodendron glorious and it was popping out this new leaf before I went away. I think I showed it in my favorites video because I have recently moved it to this spot and holy cow this leaf is so long. I feel like it's giving much more Melanochrysum vibes than it was when the leaves were a bit smaller. Um, like this shape isn't as Melanochrysum-y but this, I am absolutely here for it. So it is doing so, so well here. And I mean, you, again, you see how close it is to the ceiling. You realize, I realize that I'm going to have to figure something else out. I might need to move it down onto the floor because right now it's on Joe's bedside table. So maybe moving it down to the floor is the next option. But for now, I'm just so glad it has grown in so well. And after the last leaf that I ripped a little bit, which was entirely my own fault for being not careful, just having one that's perfect is great. Also in this section, in this area, my Polytiflorum, this leaf right here is its newest leaf. And I feel like I just did my Politiflorum care video and in that the leaf hadn't even really come out yet. And in the week I've been away, I think it grew from maybe like that big down to there. I feel like it's 18 inches at this point and it is definitely not hardened off. It might continue to grow even bigger, which is super duper exciting. And it looks like I might be getting a little bit of new growth on the back plant as well. The the new 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 one um, is on the front plant which is slightly bigger. You can see the leaves are larger. The back one is a smaller plant but when I do get new leaves on them they are growing approximately the same size as the front one at this point. So I just like I love this one so so much. If you haven't gone and watched my Politiflorum care video you won't know how freaking easy this one is. I, not necessarily neglect this one, but I find this one to be one of the absolute easiest anthuriums that I have ever taken care of. And it just keeps putting out beautiful new growth almost nonstop while I give it like nothing special. Cause like you can see the light up there. It's not fantastic. It's nothing to write home about. I am, I say I'm still working on this, um, but I literally have a grow light down there that I'm planning on installing very, very soon, hopefully in this area to help with these plants and maybe it'll like that. But as of right now, and for the majority of its life, it has just been up there getting not tons of light and being absolutely fine, which I love. I love when a plant can be absolutely fine and just like live and be okay. It makes my life so much easier. 
One thing I have noticed is that I desperately, desperately, desperately need to water my hanging pots. They are feeling so, so light at the minute. And I don't know if you can see, like see those wrinkles in there. Those wrinkles are there because <laughs> I'm pretty sure that I didn't water these ones before I went away. Uh, the morning that we left, I did a really, really big, like, go around with my watering can to make sure that everything was nice and hydrated and I tend to forget these ones because I do need to water these ones over something. Usually I water them in the shower and I didn't have time just to let them sit in there and I didn't want to put them into the shower before I went away and just leave them in the shower because it's my bathroom's windowless. I didn't want to put them in a situation where they probably wouldn't be as happy but instead I have just let them dry out slightly too much in my opinion. I should probably give these a very very thorough water before I do anything else with them. But like I can just feel that they are floppier though it is still putting out new growth just fine. So it kind of just goes to show that plants are really resilient, especially things like epiphytic cactus. They can tolerate, I wouldn't say like abuse, but they can tolerate a little bit more than a lot of other plants. I have like mostly epiphytic cactus in these hanging pots, like my mistletoe cactus, which is actually feeling okay. I've got a couple Hoya in these hanging pots as well, and Though they probably would prefer to be a little bit moister, they can tolerate, especially this time of year. My plants can definitely tolerate a week without water, in some cases more. I think that's where people get, like, not confused, but people were asking me before I was going away, like, oh, who's taking care of your plants? And I'm like, it's, it's a week. They'll be okay. So, like, spring, autumn, winter. Your plants will be okay for a week. In winter winter, depths of winter, your plants will probably be okay for three weeks. I left all of my plants in my flat fine for three weeks and winter and they were they were fine without water. They don't really need it, especially when it is colder and darker. But as things go into summer, if I'm leaving for a week, especially if it's during a hot spell, I will be more tempted to maybe have someone come and water halfway through. It really does depend on the weather though. If it's if it's like 15 to 20 degrees Celsius, your plants should be absolutely fine for a week's time. But anything longer, you might wanna consider getting a plant sitter. Once you're getting into like the 25 degrees, 30 degrees, my plants, when it's that hot, tend to need water like every few days, so getting somebody in during that time of year makes a lot more sense. But in the spring, we're golden. My plants have been absolutely fine. I do need to water those hanging ones though, desperately. I also have some hanging ones that are in like pots that I did water before I went. This one is my Hoya Croniana combo pot. So I have some super silver in there as well as the normal splash. And this one has already started blooming this year. It is the most prolific bloomer in my entire collection. Like you can see, it's got a bloom coming in there. I It just had one down at the bottom and it's got another new one coming in. It just blooms all the frickin' time throughout the spring and summer. Oh my goodness, I've got a peduncle down here too. Like they just appear everywhere. And like this was the first Hoya that I ever got to bloom. So if you're looking for a Hoya that blooms regularly, frequently, maybe getting yourself a Croniana would be a good choice. I know people suggest Bellas as well. I have never had a big Bella, but my Croniana is easily my most prolific bloomer. And I just like, I love the smell of it too. It's kind of like, a little bit sickly sweet, just a very, very tiny bit sickly, but mostly sweet and nice, and I just really like the smell, so obviously it's not smelling right now because none of them are actually in bloom, but it's doing so well. 
I did kind of miss the bulk of the blooming though with one of them while I was gone, but that's okay. It has more on the way and I can enjoy it in a week's time probably. Also, if you haven't watched my recent plant chores video, you won't have seen that I have started to clean off my plants of sulfur. So I did some of the plants in this corner, I mean all of the plants in this corner, and I am loving seeing them all clean and shiny again without those water spots. It's just so incredibly exciting. I did those as well as my Rafidophora tetrasperma over here. I do still need to wash off my Glorious because, oh my goodness, if all the leaves could be beautiful and shiny like that new one, that'd be great. But it just looks so much nicer when they're clean. I've missed having clean plants. It's been nearly six months now and I'm ready. Just before I went away, I know I this is as I shouldn't necessarily do things just before you go away <laughs> because stuff like this happens. But just before I went away, I repotted my Alocasia cupria in with my Alocasia aslanii. And the aslanii was in my pond box. So 100% humidity, getting loads of that. Not as much light, but lots of, lots of moisture, lots of humidity. And I decided I wanted to put them in to the same pot that got fairly similar care. I figured they would be all right. And I do think down the line they will be all right, but I have come home to some uh, unfortunateness in some places with it. It lost three of its leaves and it only had four. <laughs> so it does still have one and it does look like there is one still on the way. So I'm not incredibly worried about it, but transferring plants into new environments when you can't actively supervise them is probably not the best idea. I should have probably waited to transfer them until I could keep a better eye on them because I could have put this one in a different place as soon as I saw that it was going downhill, but because I wasn't here, I couldn't see it going downhill. And so we're just gonna keep our fingers crossed and hope that it gets a little bit better. I do think it will. I can't imagine it being terrible, but it, it has gone worse than I would have wanted because like you don't want your leaves to come out like this ever. It sucks when your plants don't do great. So I am a little bit bummed that I did do that. And I think also my um, scalprum, which is in the Ikea cabinet, I'll show you in a little bit. That one also is not doing too hot. So I really shouldn't have made such a drastic change in these plants just before going away, but you live and you learn. Um, I have now learned and I will live and hopefully so will this plant. Ooh, okay. I have just seen this. So <laughs> ignore these bottom leaves because these have the silver spots on them, but my Hoya obovada splash put out this brand new leaf while I was gone as well. I think it was starting to emerge before I left, but since I have come back, it has popped this out and it is stunning. This is a plant that I've really not shown much of in the past, just because it hasn't looked amazing. It's not the big obovada <laughs> that I desire. I really want to have a big, beautiful, kind of bushy, traily one if I possibly can, but I've just kind of had a little bit of a stump that hasn't grown for a really long time. Could have had a flat mites, and so maybe the sulfur treatment has helped with it. I haven't like gone in with a microscope or anything to see, but now that it has been sulfured and treated, it has started growing more, which I do love. And I just really like that this one is so splashy. Let me wipe off some of the sulfur because the old leaves of it, like this leaf, really doesn't have that much splash to it. Most, if not all of the splashes you are seeing in this leaf are sulfur. 
So I was a bit worried that it was gonna grow in quite plain, which I mean would be fine, but y'all know how much I love a splashy Hoya. They, they just do it for me. But yeah, I just want it to be splashy and beautiful and I think we are on the way with this one. So hopefully in a few more leaves time, I'll be feeling much better about it. I kind of forget that I even have this one. I know that's bad, but a lot of the plants on this shelf I forget that I have just because there's just so many crowded into one space it's just like a wall of green which I like but I forget about like the individual plants and their names and stuff like that so maybe I should get better about that this year because like I'm not I don't want to give this one away this is this is where I like struggle because yes I am still trying to actively downsize but it's like I don't want to get rid of my ovobata I don't think about it every day I forget that I have it but I don't I don't want to get rid of it because I do like the idea of having it in my home. So I do struggle a little bit with some of the plants on the shelf and like potentially giving them away or not. Typically the answer is I don't because I like them. <laughs> but anyways, that's fine. I think that's the main bit for these shelves. Before I left, I also repotted some of my cacti into semi-hydro substrate and I think that they are doing quite well. I also did like a super duper fast water with these before I went. I kind of just poured a little bit into all of them and left them in a container with like the tiniest bit at the bottom. And I think that's been absolutely fine for them. I've never actually watered them like that previously because I know they like to dry out, but I just didn't have the time to drain them all completely before I left. So this was kind of the best that I could do. I think it worked absolutely fine. There's not water still in the bottoms of these containers. This one does look like ever so slightly moist, but not in a bad way. Also, I'm not sure how my booby cactus is doing since the transition. It is feeling a little bit squishy, but this is the one that I had issues with root mealies on. And I don't know if I have fully solved that problem. I did do a hydrogen peroxide soak as well as a horticultural soap soak on this one and the papyrus cactus back there. I think those were the main ones I did them on because those are the things that I saw. Oh, I also did it on the Apuncha because I, I don't know if that one had root mealies or not, but I think it might have, which it was, it's really unfortunate and I really don't want to get rid of any of these plants. And so if I am able to save them, I will try. But I was speaking to my patrons and they said that now that I have most of them in semi-hydro, because there's no like organic material, there's no soil microbiome for like good things to live in. When I do water them, I can give them like a flush of hydrogen peroxide solution just to like make sure that anything that might still be lingering inside of the roots of these plants goes away, which is extremely smart. And then I can water them with normal fertilizer water just to like carry on as usual. But I don't think that would work if I did have them in soil because I would want to be keeping the microbiome of them as good as possible, as healthy and full as possible. And doing a hydrogen peroxide soak like negates that, kills everything in there. So I wouldn't be able to do it if I weren't keeping my cacti and succulents in semi-hydro substrate. So I am kind of now glad that I am. Also, this one, do you see those little pink spikes? That has to be Nunu Growth. Oh, hello. Hello. <laughs> How are you doing, Cleo? Are you good after our, our time of way? Oh, hello. Okay. Um, maybe not in the cactus cabinet, but I love. So, yes, my... Oh, I don't even know what this one's called. I never remember them. My Pharaoh Cactus. It's definitely got some new growth in there. Because look at those little pink spikes. 
they are so cute so I think we are doing good things in this cabinet I do have a bit of a change that I'm gonna be making in these shelves that I got while I was in the States a little sneak peek but that will happen in time um, I think probably later this month or in May depends how busy I am really but for now cactus cabinet is doing absolutely fine I literally just saw this looking this way so my oh discoria discolor is growing very very well over here but I've just looked and it is spiraling tendrilling onto my alocasia dragon scale which I think is absolutely adorable I'm probably going to have to take it off just because it probably shouldn't do that long term because if I move my plants I don't want it to get ripped but it is immensely cute just in there this is probably the most insane thing that I have come home to so I've just pulled it out a little bit so I can show you better but <laughs> this is my anthurium regal new leaf <laughs> and I swear when I showed it to you last it was like that big and now it is easily three times the size of my face like one two maybe four times it is so so big like <laughs> I cannot even freaking believe how big and beautiful it's become and it has still not hardened off yet it is still soft and I know I know that the bottom's a little bit funky but I do not care because this is the most incredible thing I have ever seen. I cannot explain how amazed I was when I came into our flat yesterday, like when we got home. I just saw this and I was just like... Because like its last leaf was big and beautiful. And I was like, oh yeah, this is a cool big beautiful leaf. But this one... I literally cannot compare them in the same way. <laughs> That's probably the best you, you're gonna get <laughs> in terms of comparison. But it is just, it is my current everything. And it has been sitting so, 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 so close to my grow light. So it's just been in here, like this, I believe. So like it has been within eight inches of my mother grow light there, which I think it has been loving. It's been just soaking that up. I think that could be part of the reason why it has grown so big because it's getting like the best possible grow light from, ooh, like an hour before sunset till 10 p.m. every day. So like maybe five hours at the minute, maybe less but it's been getting quite a lot of light there. And I don't know if it's going to keep growing or not. I don't really know if I care, because even if it just stays this size, I am like over the moon with how amazing this leaf is. Like, oh, I thought that one was good, but this one, it's just perfect. It is perfect. So yeah, I'm, that, that might be, one of the most exciting things that has happened since I left and I knew it was going to be a crazy change when I left I knew that it was going to grow up oh my goodness Cleo can you get down from there please can you get down from there please thank you thank you baby <laughs> do you miss us I think you missed us a lot oh Bless you. <laughs> oh, but yeah, the regal, oh, just everything. I also got a new leaf on the philodendron melalone, this leaf. It is still not hardened off yet. It's definitely not its biggest one, but I think it is still coming in. So I have time to let it continue growing. 
I mean, to be honest, I love when this one puts out new leaves, but it doesn't excite me as much as something like the Regal does, where it is just like this big, huge, beautiful thing. I think because this one has just been putting out big growth regularly, it just like, it doesn't give you that spark as much as the Regal does, but it is still growing and it is very happy. So yeah, I can't wait until I can get these plants washed and cleaned of the sulfur. I might do it fairly soon. They haven't had two rounds of the sulfur, but I think I'm just gonna nix the second round and get on with life because I just really want my plants to look pretty again. And washing the sulfur off will help with that. So yeah, that's kind of like the main stuff for the sideboard here. Let's go into the Ikea cabinet. So, got a couple main things in here. So, first one, I know I just showed in my favorites video, but it has, it's gotten even better since I went away. <laughs> so right before I left, it was putting out this new leaf, which has a decent chunk of green on it, which is a really great thing. It means that it is starting to like get back to a manageable level of green, I hope. I hope that it's not just fully reverting. I know I said that I wanted it to revert, but I don't want it to revert entirely. But I didn't realize it was going to put out another new leaf while I was gone. Literally in the week I was away, this new leaf has come out as well, which has an even better balance of variegation on it. The fully white leaves have gone a little bit dry, which I think is to be expected. I knew that was going to happen. I think I was just hoping it wouldn't happen quite yet, but now that it has those leaves, I would think it would be able to sustain a little bit more growth and its roots are doing really, really well. It has just been in this water the entire time, but I think it's almost at the level where I could pot it up and put it in something, probably semi-hydro would be the best for it. It does need a little bit of a refill at the minute because the level's a little bit low, but that's because I was away. So I'm just, um, if I didn't mention, this is the Alocasia gagiana variegated that I got at the Bristol plant swap. But I am just so pleased that it is properly putting out well variegated leaves now, not just fully white ones. And then the other thing that I need to pull out, which is gonna take a second because it's a little bit buried in here. And it is dropping a leaf, which I think is absolutely okay. I'm fine with this one dropping a leaf because, okay, one, this is my Allocation Ninja. And when I got it, it was putting out leaves I mean, actually I got it with leaves this size. It hadn't put out anything, but the newest leaf on it <laughs> is bigger than my head. Like compared to the previous growth, this new leaf is incredible and huge. I was not expecting my Allocation Ninja to do so phenomenally. I've had a black velvet for like several years at this point and it hasn't kind of sized up in the same way that this Allocation Ninja has. And I don't know if it's just because it's been inside the Ikea cabinet and it's loving life in there or what, but holy cow. Look at that. It is just huge and perfect. I feel like I'm going to have to shift this one to a slightly different place because now that this new leaf is in here, it is blocking everything beneath it and the ninja leaves are thick. They are very, very, very thick leaves. And so pretty much no light is gonna be able to get through them. Anything directly beneath it pretty much doesn't have a chance. So I might need to do another shift around in the cabinet. I feel like I've been shifting so much lately and I think it just has been because things are growing really well. Things have been growing fairly rapidly, especially now that we are getting into spring. Sorry, my um, parasitica has just got this and I was gonna wrap it around just trying to figure out which direction 
I want it to go to go in the right way. I know you're supposed to do it counterclockwise, but I'm pretty sure I've wrapped this entire thing clockwise and it's been absolutely fine. So yeah, things, things are doing fairly well in here. I think that's the main things for the top section that are happening. I wonder. I don't think my Hoya are doing all that much at the minute. My Crinkle 8 is. My Crinkle 8's just been putting out like good leaf after good leaf lately since the sulfur treatment basically. Um, and before that it was doing absolutely nothing. So like the sulfur treatments worked. Um, I, do I don't know if this one for sure had flat mites or not, but it's growing now. And so I don't really mind as long as it's growing. And then down the bottom, we have a couple of things. So do y'all remember <laughs> that I got in January time, a cutting of variegated Christmas cactus or Thanksgiving cactus really? Well, that did not go well, but it grew these two tiny little leaves before it died and I was able to propagate them and they have finally put out some little roots. I've had them in like the shallowest of shallow puddles of water. Like, I don't even know how much you can see that. Like the tiniest little bit of water this whole time just allowing the ends of them to be submerged. I probably could have put them straight into soil because I know you can propagate jungle cacti and Thanksgiving cacti, etc. All those epiphytic cacti. I know you can prop them straight in soil and that's normally how I do propagate them, but because I had propagated that cutting in soil and it just did not work, I didn't really want to risk it. I wanted to make sure that these ones actually rooted and they have, and they have actually sized up as well. I feel like they were half the size when I put them in there. I, d I didn't show y'all when I put them in there because I wasn't sure if it was like a lost cause or anything. I didn't want to get my hopes up and get your hopes up because it was a wish list plant of mine. So I didn't want to, I didn't want to have things go wrong and have to not explain it, but inform you all. But I think things are going well at this point and that I can get it to to grow. I will prop them up um, fairly soon, pop them up. This guy, this is a tiny little alocasia corm of a variegated alocasia fried egg that I got from Claire. And she gave me this one because it had the most green on the sprout. And while it's not green, there, it isn't also entirely fully white, which is good. I feel like it gives me hope that it's not going to be entirely green and it might have a good balance of variegation, though she has said that pretty much all of the corms that she got from her variegated fried egg plant have grown in fully white. I don't know if they will slowly revert or like get more green similar to how my Gagiana variegated has or what but because there are those little spots of green similar to that one I feel like I have hope with it and I think I will be able to get it to grow nicely. A lot of these things are just kind of like fingers crossed because they're just coming in but I don't mind. I'm happy with that. This is the alocasia scalp rum that I was talking about um, that I took out of my pond box just before I left, put it into my Ayakia greenhouse cabinet. Oh, hello, baby. Hi. Yes, you can, you can go there. Yeah. Um, it is not happy. Not at all happy. Its leaves have like entirely curled up. This one's gone fully yellow. I think I might need to chop it all the way back and I'm hoping that once I chop it all the way back it can regrow from there. I think it's possible. I have had some allocations that have grown back from nothing before. 
and I've also had some that haven't grown back from nothing. So I think that is that is kind of the direction I'm gonna have to go with this one because obviously it's it's not perfect um, <laughs> and nowhere near and it did not like the transition. Again, this is why you don't do major changes right before you go away on sensitive plants because they just don't handle transitions particularly well. Specifically alocasias. But that's okay. I think it will be fine. I, I believe in it, but who knows. I haven't shown this one in a video in a minute or potentially ever. But this is my Anthurium SB Limon that I got again from Claire. But I think I got this one like a year ago. And it had just been propping in a prop box for a really long time and I only recently put it onto this pole. But since I have, it has grown two new leaves because there's technically two plants in there. And both of them have given me new growth at this point, which is super duper exciting. I am loving this sort of silvery blue green color. It's almost like Cebu blue in color, but lobey. It's like as if an Anthurium um, Luxuriance and a Cebu blue had a baby. I know it's not that that, I know that's not what it is, but that's the sort of vibe it's giving me and I am not mad. In fact, I'm really happy that it is properly growing. I don't think it's rooted into the pole quite yet. It doesn't look like it because this is technically a climbing anthurium. So I'm hoping I can get it to root into the pole and maybe get bigger. That would be awesome. But I don't know, we will see. This one has just been a little bit slow to grow as well. Also, both of my Monstera Dubias are doing phenomenally. This one over here has done so well. It's climbed off the top of the moss pole and is now trying to scale the side of the cabinet. I am not sure what I'm going to have to do with those ones because they, they just grow so quickly. Once you get a Monstera Dubia to start actually shingling and growing up something, it grows so, so, so fast. So I'm, I'm at a point where I'm not sure that they'll be able to stay in the cabinet much longer. I'm gonna need to give both of them moss pole extensions. Should I join them together? I really, I really don't know what I want out of them because I also now have that big one. I would like to grow one of these big. I don't think that's an unreasonable ask for them. But now that I already have a big one, it's like, do I need to do that? I don't know. I I really don't know. I think I still have that as a goal and I want it to happen. But I don't think these are going to be able to stay in here for very long. Also, my Hoya Australis Lisa is putting out new growth and it is so, so red. Compared to, it's like very white and green leaves. Excuse the sulfur spots. Um, but look how red that is. It is like blood dark red compared to the rest of the plant, which is quite fun. So that is it. That is everything that happened to my collection while I was away on holiday. For the most part, I am immensely happy with everything and it just feels so nice to come back to plants after not looking at them for a while, like for a week, I guess. And coming back and being able to see all the major changes, I feel like that is such a fun thing to be able to do every once in a while. Though also, I obviously made some mistakes and some issues with watering and moving things before that they were ready to do so. So it is, it's normal and I'm not mad at myself for it. It is just part of being a plant parent. No one can be perfect. So I don't expect myself to be either. Before I go though, I want to say a huge thank you to the newest members of my Good Growing Fam over on Patreon because it has been such a busy time for me. I do have quite a few at the minute. So I want to say a huge thank you to Lynn, Claire Mahoney, Ozzy, Sierra, and Bookish Botanical Boo. Thank you so much for joining in on Patreon. I hope you absolutely love it over there. If anyone else is interested in joining my Patreon, you get all kinds of things like bonus videos, live chats with me, access to our discord server where we can all be 
Patreon plant friends and help each other out and geek out over exciting things that are happening in our collections, as well as you get to vote on some videos that I put on my channel. Basically, you just get more access to me and a little bit more bonus content fun. It is only three pounds a month or about $4.50, about four euros. And just for that one low, low price, <laughs> you get everything. You can think about it as buying me a cup of coffee each month or running one of my grow lights each month because that's about how much it takes to run one of my grow lights. And it just helps me out a little bit. Obviously, absolutely no pressure, but it is there if any of you want it. So yeah, thank you guys for joining in. I really hope you love it there. Everybody else, thank you so, so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up down below and leave a comment on other houseplanty things you'd like me to talk about in the future. If I mention anything here that you want me to expand on more, I can make that happen and subscribe for more. I will see you in the next one. Do not forget to keep growing. Bye.